Hi everyone, it's Avatar Stage 7 again, and here I'm talk going to talk to you about uh, the three top changes that are going to be happening in early or mid-2021 with the arrival of Blackwood, or at least the start of March, something or other, early March, when they release the next update that will completely and utterly overhaul uh, many quality of life issues and the champion point system which is uh, dubbed these days as champion point system 2.0 where they will be making the champion point system more horizontal um, rather than vertical so that is probably one of the major changes I don't have the PTS installed because it's simply not enough space on my hard drive to handle that and all the other games I need to uh, explore, play, uh, test out and whatnot but they are going to be overhauling this entire champion point system. So it used to be that when you hit champion point, uh, the first champion point then started advancing forward. They had a cap of 810 because players got more and more powerful. And there was a huge difference between uh, top champion point players and uh, starting players and players with extremely low champion point scores. Not to mention the fact that each of these trees had huge numbers of, well, the way they were designed, they had huge numbers of calculations that were involved in the background that had to be calculated, and that contributed somewhat, I won't say that it's all of the problems, behind the server issues for the Elder Scrolls Online, especially during PvP or player versus player in Cyrodiil or the Alliance, Alliance Wars. And you can see that from some of the examples why they would be calculated. So when you bash, you have a 33% chance to reduce the enemy's movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds. So this would have to be calculated each time that you bash, and that would mean that if there were thousands of tanks bashing on the server during dungeons or in PvP, you would have a lot of calculations that would need to be run in the server background. And considering that there are often hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of players in ESO, if they were all doing this at the same time, there would be a lot of calculations, not just bashing, of course, but other things uh, that are related to this. Let's see, for example, all the heavy and uh, heavy attacks to that are how much it restores in terms of stamina, uh, restored by heavy attacks, uh, it's like by 14.39%, for example, would mean that every player who's doing heavy attacking would have this thing calculated each and every time, uh, rather than being kind of built into the stats at the outset. Uh, so no need to get too deep into the math of that, it's just that the more of these background calculations the game has to make, the slower and more likely it's going to affect the speed of servers, which means lag or booting people out during a game. So what are they going to do to fix this issue, or at least help to alleviate the server issues? It's not going to be just uh, the change in champion points that will help the servers, they're also going to be uh, upgrading to totally new servers, I imagine more uh, powerful server cores with uh, greater bandwidth, internet bandwidth, and uh, more processors of course, but I don't know what, they're not going to reveal those specific details obviously. But with regards to the champion point system, a lot of this was vertical, so you had to pay a lot of points, and each of these would open the next set of stars, and eventually you, you paid enough points, like 75 points or something like that, you would unlock Foresight, and if you paid 120 points, you'd un unlock Arcane Well. Well, now they've flattened this so that most skills only take 20, uh, 30, 40, or 50 points, and it's the uh, maximum percentage that it'll help you at is often capped, like this will be capped at about 1,500 in the upcoming update, so you will be, you'll have less spell penetration, but of course they're also going to change it so that if you were, the stat bonuses from champion points uh, that you would get would also increase your weapon damage, which would offset much of these uh, reduced uh, caps on things like spell penetration and spell critical or like things like critical damage is max 10% no no longer Going to be as high as oh, I don't know 20 25% or something like that That you see in the current champion points so it's less Power but more choice in the next system rather than what it is now Which is more power but less choice because a lot of this is very locked into certain uh, progressions certain ways of uh, going up the star uh, stars for each one so they're going to reduce the number of constellations 
from nine here to exactly three. So these three blue ones will only be one blue, but they're not going to be consolidated to, they're not going to be all combined together into one blue. What's going to happen is they're moving it into one constellation called War, the other one called, uh, I can't remember, Vitality or something, and the other one is called uh, Crafts or something like that. Like I said, it's been a while since I looked at the, the notes for it. Uh, but uh, those are generally how it's going to work. The crafts one is going to involve all the things that are related to like uh, thievery, uh, negotiation, mercantile, crafting, uh, resource gathering. Vitality uh, will be related to everything related to, uh, I don't know, what is it, health, uh, defense, tanking or something like that. Uh, vitality and war will be related to everything related to combat essentially. And you're going to be able to find that they're going to have constellations that are uh, sub-constellations within a constellation, so they'll have that one war constellation. you are gonna have that one war constellation here, for example, in the blue, but you're gonna be able to drill down further because there's gonna be sub-constellations that will expand it, um, expand the stars in it. And so, like I said, that's going to change everything in terms of the fact that they're going to take any buffs that would increase, like, your total health and magicka. I believe there's even... they exist right now. Do they? And then they have the nodes that increase your health or something like that. Either way, one way or the other, what they're going to do is to fold anything that involves uh, boosting health and other magicka and health and stamina stats directly to your character by the time you hit level 50. So uh, every player will have a boost in stats and be much harder to kill, which will also affect PvP, which I discussed some time ago about um, whether you should play ESO in 2021 and if you find that it's taking too long to kill people in PvP is a thing that's going to be an issue for you. This champion point system is one of the reasons why it might be the case. So, in order to reduce the server load as well, not only are they changing the system so that it's uh, lower percentages, but they're also changing it so that things like this tenacity thing is something you have to slot. So you have to choose a slot, and there's going to be a maximum of 12. You're going to have a bar up the top that would be 4 green, 4 blue, and 4 red skills. Uh, that you can slot at any one time that are active in the required calculations, like this one here, that might restore uh, more magic and stamina. Um, this is just an example, I'm not quite sure if they're keeping this specific uh, star node. So you have to slot it, so if you want something that's like, when I bash, I get uh, magic or stamina back or critical leaps, like this one here, I heal every time I deal critical damage, you probably end up having to slot this in the next system, uh, in the new uh, CP 2.0 system. So what else is there that's going to change in uh, the upcoming patches, or especially the one that's coming up in early March anyways, is they're going to change the uh, like I said, the statistics, the uh, the way they're going to calculate things and fold more hit points into your base stats. So uh, the things you see here for my current character, for example, for every character who reaches level 50 with four champion points, they're going to have a, see a boost of somewhere in the area of like 4,000, 5,000 magicka health and stamina. So what you see here on my screen for my own stats using a mod to show you... Oh, um, by the way, in the next few updates, it's also going to... Uh, uh, change the base uh, character screen that you see here, C, which I hit C to get to, to have more of the details that you see uh, in what I get from my mod. This my mod shows me all the details for spell damage, penetration, things like that. I think they're going to go overkill and fold things that are like in this mod, for example, into the character screen so that you can finally see all the details and statistics that you want to see. Uh, and so more easily understand your build. So going back to this again, uh, like I said, you're going to see that every character is going to get a bonus of close to 4,000 uh, 4, to 5,000 mag magic and health and stamina, roughly around there. I mean, it's somewhere in the PTS notes or something like that that they're still experimenting on. Uh, I read it briefly. 
And so I'm gonna have like 40, close to 43 to 44,000 Magicka, 22,000 health, and uh, 13,000 stamina. And if this was PvP, they'd add another 2,000, 1,000 to 2,000. I, I think they're cutting the health bonus in half in the next update for PvP when you add your Cyrodiil because they know that you're gonna have even more hit points being folded into your base character by the time you hit level 50, which is max level, before you start earning champion points. So this will make characters harder to kill, um, which will also mean that more people will probably switch to non-champion point PvP in the future, but that's yet to be seen. So that's one of the, the major things, and plus the fact that they're also going to be changing racial stats. That's probably one of the big things here that I mentioned. Racial stats. For example, the Breton here, I'm not sure if he's going to get nerfed slightly. I mean, they make up for it because if you increase your stats by like 3,000, 4,000, that also increases your weapon damage and compensates for uh, losses in deep uh, armor skill lines and things like that. So racial changes, there's definitely going to be a bunch of them. I'm not sure if they're going to change the, the Breton as much. They might drop Max Magicka in the end by like half, so it'll be a thousand instead of two thousand. The spell resistance thing might drop by half to like only a thousand. And uh, this might be changed or unchanged. So this is going to be one of the major things, they're going to change the racial passives here because of the fact that they're boosting your base stats of max magicka, health, and stamina. And so that's going to be affecting things like Nords, whose resistances used to be uh, plus 4,000 to all of the resistances, will probably drop to like 2,000 something instead, because there are going already going to be more resistances base into your base resistances that are found here in magic resistance, physical resistance, well mine already folds here uh, the Breton magic resistance. So of all of the, uh, this is more of the base 7501, this will already go up by at least another, oh I don't know, 2000 uh, in the next few updates, assuming that they keep that, so it'll be like 9000 already without having to get any armor or anything like that. So that's going to be one of the things, one of the other major updates will be changes to medium, heavy, light armor passives. They're going to have negatives and positives. Heavy armor will make it harder for you to dodge because it will increase the cost of dodging but decrease the cost of blocking. Medium armor will be, I can't remember the exact negatives off the top of my head, but uh, for medium armor they're going to change it so that you will run faster as a bonus but the negative is you don't, you can't block very much damage. Light armor is even allows you to have bonuses of you can run faster like you can uh, and it'll cost you less to run or sprint and you'll have uh, bonuses to dodging like less dodging your dodging will be less costly but your blocking and your blocking will be horrible like you'll have the worst uh, blocking penalty of all compared to like so heavy armor has blocking bonuses light armor has blocking penalties medium armor has uh, dodge bonuses and slight uh, blocking penalties because it's kind of in the middle. And uh, let's see, will there be much more changes here? I think Mimaru takes the, the most uh, hits in the upcoming updates on top of my head. This weapon damage increase will drop to like 3 or 4% instead. Uh, that won't be changed. That probably won't be changed. The weapon critical rating here used to be. If you, it'll drop by a little bit so that if you were wearing five pieces, you'd probably lose half of it. But now you can wear, if you wear seven pieces, you will, you might actually end up with more weapon critical rating. So, so the the whole meta of the five one one five pieces of whatever your main armor plus one of the other types, because of the undaunted passive, uh, undaunted metal that like giving you like. 2% per type of armor one may change because they're changing the armor passive so that if you wear 7 pieces of armor you might actually have uh, slightly more than what you're getting now in the current uh, passive including uh, bonuses to health or damage that's in uh, this one. So what they're changing is instead of wearing 5 pieces or more medium armor or equipped to get your weapon damage you're going to be uh, for each piece of armor you wear, you get weapon damage. So if you were, 
still found only 5 pieces, you would actually end up with less weapon damage uh, in, champ in the not champion point, system 2.0, but in the next update, where if you wear all 7 medium armor, then you'll actually have more than, uh, slightly more than 7% bonus weapon damage, like 8% or something from last I saw. So uh, you can see that they've changed it to be improved because I never really found this to make any much sense. Like all of these here, like per piece of armor, you get a bonus. But why is it that this, like this ability agility, requires that you must wear five pieces? So they changed it so that this is in line with the other passives, such that each piece of medium armor that you wear now gives you a bonus of weapon damage, which is more useful, especially if you're a build that likes mixing and matching armor. Same with uh, uh, not that one, the light armor here. This one increases your spell critical rate by 2,191. I believe this will drop by half in the next update. But I th do believe they're going to be changing it so that for each piece of light armor you wear, your spell critical rate will go up a little bit. And it might end up being more or less than uh, the new value that they have in the next update. And same with this concentration thing for spell penetration. They might actually be chopping this in half. I'm not sure if they're going to fold half of this into uh, the base stats the base penetration, so it's spell penetration for me right now with champion points is 10,806. I think this is going to drop significantly in the next update because uh, I have like 4,000 spell penetration and champion points and they're going to get rid of that to about maximum 1,500. But they might fold more of that spell penetration into this, into your base character, hard to say, until the final update actually drops. Uh, the only other changes are changes to sets, uh, many of the sets that might not be in line or with the other sets currently in the game, they might change them. Uh, no specific examples that I can remember off the top of my head. I do know that they're going to be dropping things like, uh, let's bring up those sets that we do have here. I don't know if they're going to change Hundig's Rage, the crafted set, but they might change things like Briarheart. So uh, things that offer critical bonuses will probably get nerfed a little. Like this 833 weapon critical, assuming you have like legendary CP 160, will probably drop to like 740 or something, some somewhere in the 700s area. So they're going to be nerfing critical a little bit in many of the sets that offer critical. So critical is going to be uh, altered a lot in many of the sets, and they'll just make other uh, armor tweaks and changes to either fix any bugs or uh, alter ranges or radiuses and things like that. So, and also any sets that offer huge uh, bonuses to magic on stamina, for example, let's just say, oh, what's the set? Seducer this is a set that offers large. Oh no, this is the magic recovery set. Uh, also, your magic abilities by 10%. Let's say Necropotent or Crafty Alphic. So, this one might also change because look at the amount of magical right so if your characters are already getting 4,000 extra magical when you're a base character before champion points they might change this to nerf it so that your the max magical bonuses aren't going to be as high i'm not going to be totally sure because they don't really release all the changes yet or have decided on all of them so same with crafty off -peak. so these are really the top three major change areas like essentially your sets are going to be to be either somewhat weaker seeming because of the the new because of magicka health and stamina being full into your character which mind you in ESO damage is directly related to the the size of your stats so mag magicka stamina and health well magicka and stamina really is uh, is related to your stat like it's it's boosted by higher stats so you have a guy, a character with 40,000 magicka does more damage than a character with only 20,000 magicka. And so uh, obviously they're going to change a lot of the sets to probably have lower values just so it doesn't become like crazy overkill. Like if you were a magic character wearing crafty alphique set like this, you'd probably have like... And with uh, percentage uh, boost to your magic, you might have... 47, 50,000 magic, that could do a lot of extra damage per uh, DPS bonuses, really, I mean, extra damage per second. So those are the three major areas, armor, racial passives, and champion points are the three major areas that are going to be changed in 
uh, the next few updates this year in 2021. There, it's exciting in some ways because it balances it out, uh, makes it more beginner or casual friendly. But for some of the hardcore PvPers, this is like not so great because they now you they'll probably be forced to use non-champion point uh, PvP uh, servers instead. Uh, for me, it's great. It's fine. I have no problem with it really. It does flatten the power curve, so that means that as you have more champion points, so I'm to CP 1007, and the max cap, of course, will increase to 3600, which is good, but it also means that it's uh, after CP 500 or 800, like that, you're literally you're not gaining much more power because everyone's capped at the same percentage of like 10% eventually after spending what 50 points. 100 points maybe in, in certain new new nodes in the champion point system and so that means I'll do 10% extra critical damage just like any other low CP character will but my advantage is I can now slot I can now slot more kinds of champion point abilities now you know there's limited to four slots from green blue and red I can choose to be a healer and slot uh, all the healing star nodes that I've selected because I have so many champion points. So it makes gives a higher level character, higher CP, ESO character, more versatility rather than more power. And so it makes it easier for me to switch roles even better because right now my characters are stuck, mostly stuck in certain roles like DPS or uh, tank. Only the magic characters are able to do bad. Uh, DPS primary and tank and healing secondary. Well, my standard characters are stuck doing only healing, no, sorry, only tanking and DPS because they don't have the ability to reslot their champion points without paying gold, of course. I can actually do it, but it's a pain in the backside. Uh, plus, I have to, uh, I would have to rearm them with new sets as well for Magicka, so to turn them into healers is far more difficult. There's no real stamina. Uh, no real worthwhile stamina pathway to turn a stamina character into a healer, unfortunately. But at least it'll give me more options to change my stamina characters into full-on tanks by slotting the CP skills because I have so much CP, for example, at 1000. I think I believe some people have found that at about CP 1600 is, is ideal for uh, just achieving the same, almost the same level of power that you have right now in the old champion point system well depending on what you were before so cpa 10 to do that uh, is like twice the amount of champion points so yes i'll probably lose power in some ways but also gain gain power because of the increase in max magicka stamina and health and possibly i'm not sure if they're going to fold more innate spell penetration and physical penetration into characters at base, just like they did with a lot of the racial stats. I mean, not the racial stats, but the health, health magicka, and stamina. So that's it, really, for the three top things uh, in my uh, uh, overview of the major things we're going to be changing in the next few updates. If you found this content somewhat informative or helpful, then please feel free to subscribe or hit the like button. Uh, below and hopefully I'll see you next time.